This weekend I'm going to a bridal shower and there's nothing better than to give a personalized gift. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to etch bakeware and add that personal touch to it. If you're new here, my name is Nisha. Welcome to Little Craft Nest. If you're interested in crafting and Cricut tutorials, press that subscribe button so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. The supplies I'll be using today for today's project are a glass pie plate. I just picked this up at Walmart. And when you're selecting your glassware, try to find something with not too many bumps on the bottom of it. This pie plate that I etched earlier does have a bit of a groove right in the middle, but that's okay, we can definitely work around that. You will also need some armor etching cream, a paintbrush, it doesn't need to be fancy, it can be an old one or just a cheap one from the dollar store. You'll just need some regular vinyl, it doesn't have to be fancy, it can even be a color that you hate. And of course you'll need a Cricut cutting machine, you can cut this on the Explorer, the Maker or the Joy. Today I am using the Cricut Maker. Let's head over to the computer and get started. Here in Cricut Design Space, I started making this design. Before I started making this, I measured the diameter of the bottom of the pie plate, and that was 7.25 inches. So what I did was insert a circle, and then I just went to the top and resized it to 7.5. After that, I typed in my text. If you're interested in the fonts I used, I'll leave those linked down below in the description. We won't be needing this circle here, so let's get rid of it. Now I have completed my design, but before I cut it out, I still need to turn this into a stencil. So there's two ways we can do that. The first way would be to slice our text out of the circle, but what I like to do is highlight both the text and the circle, and then we're just going to press attach at the bottom. Now the reason I do this instead of slice is if I want to go back and make a change, it's much easier to go back and change an image that has been attached. If I had sliced it, I would have to redo the whole thing. Since everything is attached, all our letters will cut out and we will weed all those letters out and we will still have our stencil. So let's go ahead and press make it. Now since this image is going at the bottom of the dish and we wanna be able to see the image from the top after we cut the pie out of the dish, we are going to have to mirror our image because we're going to be putting it on backwards on the bottom of the dish so we can see it from the top. Then we're going to press continue. I'm just going to be selecting vinyl as we are just using regular vinyl for this project. I'm probably just going to pick a color I don't like or use that often as this is just a stencil, it's not the final image. I'm going to load my mat and get the image cut out. Place your vinyl on your mat and make sure the color side is facing you. Now I'm going to insert my mat into my maker and let it cut out. Once your design is cut out, you can remove it from your mat. I like to start weeding from the outside and then we're going to carefully weed out all the letters to create our stencil. Here's the glass pie plate I'm using. Before we apply our stencil, I'm going to quickly wipe it down with some alcohol to remove any fingerprints or debris. I have cut out a piece of transfer tape, which is the size of my design, and I'm just going to peel off the backing, then I'm going to apply it over top of the design. Oops, I had a little piece move on me, so I'm just going to go back and put that piece into place. I'm going to use my large Cricut scraper and I'm going to try to get all the bubbles out. I like to start in the middle and push my way to the outside and just repeat that process around the design. I'm also going to flip my design over and scrape the back a few times as well. I am not using my favorite vinyl, just some old stuff I had laying around and I find the backing paper likes to separate and sometimes you'll end up with a few pieces stuck to the vinyl. So I'm doing this very slowly and trying to make sure I don't lose any pieces. Folding the paper right back helps. I also have my weeding pick on hand to help if I need it. Now that we have transfer tape on our design, we are going to apply it to the bottom of the pie dish. I'm going to lay some parchment paper on our dish. The parchment paper doesn't stick to the vinyl, so it helps us position the design before we commit to a spot. 
Once it's in the spa I want, I'm going to just stick a top piece of the transfer tape to the glass and remove the parchment paper. I'm going to slowly let down the stencil and use my large scraper to smooth out the stencil while I put it down so I don't get any bubbles. Then I'm going to go over the entire design, making sure it is sticking well and we don't have any bubbles. Once our design is on, I'm slowly going to peel back the transfer tape, making sure none of our little pieces come up. If they do, I can gently press them down again. I like to look over it to make sure nothing has moved and everything is in the right place and make any adjustments necessary. Then once again, just trace every letter to make sure there are no bubbles. Now there can be bubbles in the vinyl itself, you just don't want the bubbles touching any letters, otherwise the etching cream will make its way under your stencil and you'll get bleed marks, which we don't want. Just for some extra protection, I like to add some painter's tape around the edges. I'm going to add extra tape to the bottom. This is so when I rinse the etching cream off, I'm not going to accidentally etch a piece of the glass that I don't want to. I also like to turn my glass over and just look at the other side to make sure I didn't miss any bubbles. Once my stencil's on, I usually like to let it sit for a few hours just to make sure the stencil has adhered really well. Sometimes I leave the stencil on even overnight. Sometimes if I'm in a rush and I just wanna get the project done, I'll take out my hair blow dryer and I'll just blow dry it for a few seconds. It just helps the vinyl stick a little better. Just don't do it too long because you might end up with bubbles. And then once you come back to your design again, double check again to make sure there are no bubbles. Use your fingers to smooth any out before you begin the fun part, which is etching. I'm just using this cheap paintbrush. I think I got it from the dollar store. It's just one that my kids used to paint with. And I'm going to take globs of our Armour Etching Cream and just apply it to our stencil. Once our entire stencil is covered, I like to go over everything again, just making little swirls to make sure we've got all the glass covered. Once that's done, we're just going to set our project aside for about 15 minutes, which is a little longer than the recommended time, but I find 15 to 20 minutes seems to work really well. Once our time is up, we're going to take a paintbrush and remove the access cream as we can use this for another project. I've had this small little jar of Armour Etch for quite some time and I've been able to do countless projects with it. There will still be some cream left over on our glass so we're going to take it over to the sink and rinse it off. You can use a paintbrush to try to get it off, but I find it easier just to put a glove on and wipe it off. Make sure your etching cream is not running on a part of the dish that you don't want etched. Once you've got all the cream off the glass, you can pull the vinyl and tape off your dish. We're going to rinse it one more time and dry it and we are done. This dish looks so great and it definitely adds that personal touch we were looking for for this gift. If you enjoyed this video and you're still watching, please give this video a thumbs up. So I want to make a few more things to go with this shower gift. So join me in my next video and we will be making something that matches this. So stay tuned. If you don't want to miss that video, make sure you have pressed the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload that video. And if I have already uploaded that video, it will be down below in the description so you can access that next video easily. Happy crafting and I hope to see you on more crafting adventures.